Hello, Paul. How are you? I'm here. Good to see you, Theo. Pleasure, pleasure as always. Exciting uh, times ahead today with the Fed interest rates. We're going to see what sort of price action we're going to get on the charts. Huh? You, early this morning, we saw some nice pin bars on the on, on the Australian dollar yen. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Lots of uh, lots of great uh, price action this week. I think. I think going to yes. be lots of uh, lots of volatility. Yes, absolutely. So excited and looking forward to to listen what you have to say today about the price action. <laughs> always, always there. Yeah. In the meantime, guys, uh, please make sure you subscribe on the YouTube channel so you get all the notifications when we upload the videos. And I think Paul, you are good to go. Super. Thanks, there. Let's just bring up some slides here. Let's uh, bang. Awesome. Super. Perfect. Hopefully everyone can uh, hopefully everybody can hear me. Everyone can see me. And uh, thanks for the uh, intro, Theo. Uh, good uh, afternoon, everybody. I uh, hope you're well. Hope you can hear me. Hope you can see me. And uh, welcome to uh, session 31 of our price action trading guide here on Admirals. And uh, today we're going to be focusing on trading price action on uh, FX markets. So uh, during this particular series, what we've done is you know we've looked at uh, you know quite a few of the different asset classes. So I think we've looked at commodities. All right, uh, we've had a, a look at indices, and today I thought well we'll just have a little focus on what are fx markets you know for for the new traders uh, and actually sort of you know roll out to, well you know what and how and why would price action work um upon them so uh great to see you all here as always i uh, i recognize that we have a uh, a broad range of experience of traders who join us for our sessions from complete beginners to to you know intermediate traders you're all very welcome for the beginner traders there'll be lots here to to, to take away and there'll always be one or two little uh, uh, elements for the more advanced traders to reinforce their knowledge or maybe give them just a little new slant on something uh, else uh, i also recognize that we have a, a truly global audience who join us here for our sessions it's a uh, Great to, to have you here uh, and wherever you're joining us, you know, myself and everybody at Admirals, we hope you're well, uh, hope you're having a good 2023 and that you are enjoying these rather uh, interesting markets that we find ourselves in uh, at, the, uh, at the moment. So uh, it would be interesting to know, for me to know, just of those of you here today joining us, you know, how many of you, uh, you know, trade FX markets, okay, as one of your main markets, uh, and also, you know, what, if any experience do you have trading price action um, upon them? So uh, any experience or any uh, insight would be uh, useful. You know, it's, uh, I always appreciate everybody, uh, you know, so we've got a great range of experience with joiners and lots, everybody will have their own different views, uh, and they're all very, uh, all very welcome uh, here as, uh, as always. Um, so, so uh, Mark, Carlos, everyone, yeah, very great stuff. And it's uh, great to all see you all here, okay? You're uh, all very, uh, very welcome and stuff. And um, Carlos says price action is uncertain. That's an interesting point. Hopefully, as we go through this session, maybe I'll just give you a little bit of a, a hint on how to, to work with that, Carlos. So be sure to stay with us till the, uh, till the end. Uh, remember, Admirals, you know, a, uh, an FX and CFD broker um, with a global presence and local support. Licensed and regulated across a wide range of regulatory environments, providing competitive spreads on the most popular trading products and giving the opportunity to engage with markets using both the MT4 and MT5 platform. If you have any questions about Admirals, please get in touch with your account representative uh, and they'll be very happy to help you. So what we're going to talk about today, not unsurprisingly, is the price action series. We're going to talk about what is price action trading for you know those few of you who might be joining us for the very first um, time. But really, we're going to talk about FX markets, and um, you know we're going to give you a little bit of insight into FX markets for those of you who are new to trading. I do realise that you know, as I said, we have a lot of people here who join us who are completely uh, at the beginning. Of their trading journey and that's absolutely fine everybody was there at one point everybody has to to learn at some point but we'll talk about uh fx markets in particular and i'll talk a little bit about time frames and also the tactics that work best when we switch across to the charts and we'll look at those live markets and go through that so uh, be sure to stay with us till the end as i said because a lot of it we will switch across to the uh, to the charts and uh, have a little look at uh, uh at there okay so uh mark says hi paul that's not i have time to watch your webinar today really appreciate your trading useful hints that's, that's very kind of you mark thank you very much for your uh, thank you very much for your feedback um 
We always appreciate the feedback here at the end of each session. You should hopefully get a little feedback form. Always really appreciate you taking the time to fill that in, even if it's things you'd like to see me cover during these sessions, maybe something you don't understand. Maybe there's something you'd like to see a little bit more insight in. Very, very happy to accept all of that uh, feedback. As always, I want these sessions to be uh, useful and beneficial um, to you. So uh, thanks, for that, uh, thanks for that feedback, Mark. And for those of you who don't know me, uh, I've traded for many years, all right? Traded for funds, traded for clients. Uh, primarily FX indices and commodities are what I personally focus on. Okay, whilst well, so I have traded other asset classes, those are the ones I tend to focus on for myself. Uh, I tend to be a trend trader for the sort of a longer term trading, and we're going to touch on that today. And uh, I tend to be a reversal trader for, for intraday trading, okay? And uh, I think we did a session a couple of weeks ago on price action and intraday, uh, but today we'll be looking at, uh, primarily, as I said, FX markets. Uh, and with that, looking to see, well, you know, how can we use price action and what we've learned so far to, to basically, you know, develop a, a simple tactic uh, for uh, swing trading FX markets. So, as I said, let's stay till the, stay till the end of the session and we'll, we'll go on about that. Uh, and as always, I appreciate you know we've been running this series for a while now. So you know, if you uh, if you are completely new, and um, really, you know, this whole series is about helping beginners traders overcome that uh, element of maybe intimidation, right? From so much knowledge that uh, seems to either be required to operate in markets or is you know out there, okay, in markets. And what we wanted to do is just try and make it a little bit simple uh, and how uh, educate you on how basically understanding price and how candlesticks are formed and what they are telling us, then it becomes easier to analyze and understand uh, markets. So, uh, you know, each Wednesday, we just build upon the previous session and hope to give you an educated insight in how to use your price action in your uh, overall trading. Uh, and for those of you joining us first time, you know, what is really price action is, is just a very simple means of market analysis using the movement of price over time. Um, it's popular with retail and institutional traders. Um, we will typically focus on price action over the last three to six months. Okay, sort of more for like sort of swing trading. But everything I share with you and everything we talk about is applicable to all time frames and all instruments. And, uh, and I say this every week, you know, learning to read price action, you know, it's like learning a new language. Yes, it can be a bit challenging at first and you have to practice at it. It's working out, but as you do, well, then invariably, you know, it becomes easier and becomes more useful. And, you know, you're, you're, what you'll find is your trading careers will take you off in, in lots of different paths. All right. Everyone is unique. But if you have a, a good basic understanding of uh, you know utilizing price action being able to read it and work with it that is a really good starting point okay for for all traders and uh yeah as i said we, you know we've covered an awful lot in this series all right we've covered an awful lot into uh, as i always say the hard skills and the soft skills the hard skills you know the the, the the bits that everybody wants to see things like setups like engulfing candles key reversal candles pin bars inside bars etc you know um false breakouts star formations all of those hard setups which is what people really like to see especially when you're new but also some of the soft skills soft skills about becoming the best trader that you can be which when you're very new at the start of your trading journey you may not recognize the the relevance or the importance but i assure you the longer you trade the more you'll realize things like being prepared all right for uh, trading markets okay managing uh, risk having a trading plan all right having checklists all right reviewing your trading to improve your performance all those sort of things the longer you trade the more you will find that they are actually more useful to you right that's that's the way it's um plus i'm up to as i said talking about price action in fx markets today uh, and you know what we also say is you know every week i sort of reiterate the very simplest very simplest routine okay that we've gone through you know all of those previous sessions they are all on the admiral's youtube channel so if you've not signed up to that be sure to go and check it out okay be sure to subscribe to it uh, and as i said all the previous sessions are, are there so if you've missed a few or if you want to go over one or two of the sessions again they're all there okay along with the whole host of other useful educational material from my uh, colleagues so uh, you know it's a treasure trove all right of value in there so uh, you know be sure to make use of it uh, and and you know utilize it to, to help you with your own trading but you know we talked about having a routine 
we talked about having a very simple starting routine, all right? Namely that just a few simple steps, regardless of what instrument or asset class you look to trade or what particular time frame you even look to focus on your trading, just do these five steps to start off with, okay? Whenever you open your charts, all right, whatever it is, it could be gold, it could be Bitcoin, it could be euro dollar, it doesn't matter. First thing we do, define levels of support and resistance on our charts all right markets remember those levels so start your monthly chart go down to your weekly chart go down to your daily chart draw in those significant levels of support and resistance that's the horizontal levels of support and resistance then secondly define if there is a trend is there a trend in place i say it every week good trends leap off the chart at you don't force it, all right? Don't need to force it at all. If the if the, the trend is there, you will be able to see it. If you're having to, if you're having to turn the chart on its side and squint and, and try and look and stuff and try and, you know, force it to see if there's a trend there, it ain't there, okay? Just keep it simple, all right? If it isn't there, go and look at something else. Simple as that. Don't try and force, okay? Step three as well, what we're looking to do is if there is a trend, we're looking to see, you know, how does price react at key significant support and resistance levels? And those levels may well be the horizontal levels that you draw in at step one. They may be big round numbers, okay, that are on those charts. So, you know, gold is at 2,000, right? Euro dollar has been pivoting around like, you know, 110, et cetera. Pound against Swiss franc, okay, seems to love the kind of range between about 111 and 114. These big round numbers could also be dynamic support resistance levels. And those are the levels we utilize from the moving averages that we talked about a few weeks ago, okay? So how does price react? Because what we're looking to do, if there is a trend, well, if there's an uptrend, we want opportunities to buy at support. If there is a downtrend, we want our opportunities to sell at resistance. And what we're looking for is if we are at those levels, well, it's step four. We're looking for particular price action triggers at those levels, at those areas. So maybe there is a pin bar or an engulfing candle or a key reversal or a star formation or a fault breakout, et cetera. But we also want to be aware, step five, is it part of a bigger chart pattern? If we are in a very clear trend, is it part of maybe a flag pattern? If we're in a, let's say, an, a, a, a long-standing trend, you know, are we getting a trigger just in front of what looks like maybe you know a head and shoulders pattern, a reversal pattern? We just might want to be aware of. So, you know, don't uh, you know? Very often, new traders they, they can't see the wood for the trees, all right? And they just look to trade every single pin bar that's on their chart, but it is about context. And part of that to going through these steps is actually will help you build that picture, build the context, okay, of what's going on so that you're in a position to make better choices. And, you know, we you know, look at what we're focusing on in terms of, you know, our trading. So, um, you know, we have talked about indices, okay, major American indices, major global indices there that are all available on admirals, commodities, oil, gold, silver, and, and a whole host of others. Some of the, uh, uh, the equities, okay, people still talk about FANG stocks, those big US tech stocks, okay, you know, or even, uh, even you know, small regional bank in stocks, which have probably even got smaller uh, uh, this week based on what the price action we have seen there, uh, and even some people engaged in crypto. But today we're going to focus on FX, Okay, so when it comes to the FX, and we're going to talk about you know the FX market in particular, and give give those completely new traders just a little bit of insight into that market. You know, what I'm always interested in is to look at is then you know the dollar index, which I'll come on to in a few slides time, and then I look to focus personally on there's about 28 of the majors, which is the US dollar against the major. Uh, let's say almost like sort of you know G7 currencies, you might say maybe even sort of G10, depending upon your uh, definition of that, um, uh, and a, and a case of the the crosses between those. Okay, so you know you can probably see them there, and we will talk a bit more about them in a moment when we go into the uh, into the specifics. So you know, as it says. We have looked at, in previous sessions how to trade price action across different asset classes. Today, not on surprise, we're going to look at FX markets. And I think it's fair to say over the last 20 years, the foreign exchange markets have become a very popular asset class for private retail traders to experience and engage with. Um, however, as it says for complete beginners, it can provide 
bit of a bewildering array of descriptions, rules, and ways of operating. That's and that's very true. It's understandable, you know. Of course, I've been doing it for many years, so I recognise that. You know, I can understand it, but I do realise that at some point we were all at the start of that journey trying to grasp and understanding. And so today, what we'll do is we'll shed a little bit of light on the FX markets for the benefits of the beginners. And then actually, what we'll do is as we go through, and as I switch across to the live charts, we'll explain how could we trade them using price action. So lots for us to uh, lots for us to cut through. So let's have a little look by, you know, the fund exchange market, you know, what are the most popular traded currencies in the world? Uh, and hopefully you can see there, okay, you know, the big slice of the pie is taken by the USD, the US dollar. Uh, and then you're looking at the euro, the yen, sterling, Aussie, Swiss franc, Canadian dollar, and Kiwi dollar. Those are which are all called the majors, okay, we're on the US dollar trading against the majors, but in terms of their overall, those uh, FX currencies, you know, that is what most traders would be describing as uh, uh, as majors, okay, they're the sort of the major traded currencies around the world. There are, of course, many, many, many more. The vast majority of FX trades are taking part in those currencies, as you can see for yourself, and the US dollar makes up you know, the, the vast majority of that. So, you know, with that in, in mind, you know, people look at, well, you know, why is that US dollar so important in trading foreign exchange markets? Well, you know, what you have to realize is that if you're new, is recognize that many international trade deals are settled in US dollar. Many international debt obligations are settled in the US dollar. Um, for example, and other commodities are settled in US dollar. As it says, all commodities are pretty much priced and settled in US dollars. Yes, I know. It recently, you have probably seen no uh, news about elements of what they might term as de-dollarization. And one or two countries are doing elements of uh, their commodities trade, okay, or just even their international trade in their own currencies rather than the US dollar. Um, but you know that is it's still minuscule, all right. It's still minuscule compared to the amount of international trade and commodity trades that are done in US dollars. And so, you know, the the, the, the understanding that why the US dollar is so important is a, is a great starting point if you're going to be looking to trading FX uh, markets. As it says, you know, these are, and you know, there are other macroeconomic and geopolitical factors, you know, they, they play on the US dollar. So if you're trading FX or, or commodity or perhaps even maybe crypto, you know, you are always involved in a trade with the US dollar. Uh, hence why it becomes so important for FX traders to understand the US dollar and its relationships with okay, its relationship with commodities, relationship with other countries, okay, relationship with other other currencies, etc. And being able to recognize and understand that, as I said, should be a starting point for you as uh, uh, you know, if you're going to be trading FX. So, you know, as we, we saw in that slide the other before, you know, you can see the you know, the kind of popularity of certain particular currencies, all right? You know, you can see that we had you know the dollar, euro, yen, sterling. Aussie, Swiss franc, Canadian dollar, and Kiwi dollar. And um, uh, you know, as it says that when the, the number two to eight currencies trade against the US dollar, the, these are known as the, uh, the majors. Uh, you would find a lot of those would say in the trades between numbers two and eight. So if you were trading the Aussie against the Swiss franc, or maybe the Canadian dollar uh, against the Japanese yen, that might be known as you know trading the minus. Uh, and then if you're trading anything outside of these pairs. So maybe you're trading the uh, Mexican peso against the Singapore dollar, all right? Uh, trading outside of those one to eight pairs, that is known as the exotics. So just so you understand the, the, the terminology when you're hearing traders talking about what they're particularly trading. Uh, and by all means, you'll find on admirals there is, you know, all the majors are there, uh, pretty much all of the miners and, and a good selection of the exotics are available to you to, to trade. Uh, but what we're going to look at is, you know, we're just going to focus on the most popular traded currencies. And there's reasons for that, as we will come into in a uh, in a few moments time. So, you know, as it says, as we touched upon, you know, the, the US dollar is popular because it is and remains and will undoubtedly remain for a good while, right? It's the reserve currency of the world, all right? Based on the largest economy in the world, the, the United States. And as we've said earlier, commodities are priced in US dollars, both you know the soft and the hard commodities. So all countries need to hold US dollar in order to facilitate commodities purchases and other global trades. So 
If the US dollar is the number one most popular currency and every trade is invariably one currency against the other, then which are the most popular to trade against the US dollar? You know, which are the ones that we want to particularly look at um, focusing on ourselves? Well, the, if we look at the individual currencies, you know, uh, looking at, you know, which ones are the, the most uh, uh, most popular, well, just move my uh, here out of the way for just a moment, is that we can see that, you know, not unsurprisingly, the euro against the US dollar makes up 30% of all FX trades, all right? And um, that's not unsurprising. I, I think the US dollar, euro, euro against US dollar might be by volume you know, the most traded uh, product in the uh, in the world. But then you can, you've got dollar yen, pound against dollar, Aussie dollar, US dollar against Canadian dollar, Kiwi dollar against US dollar, which is pretty much all of those, all of those kind of, you know, if you think about it, that's all the kind of majors, the trades against the US dollar. And then we get into smaller euro against the yen, pound against the yen, euro sterling, Aussie yen, euro Aussie, and then the rest, okay? So it is still, as I said, it's so majors, okay? Those trades against the, uh, the US dollar, okay? Make up the vast majority of the FX pairs. Then you're getting into the minors, okay? In terms of, you know, those numbers two to eight in terms of rankings trading against each other and then the rest. So you can see you know, how big an impact the US dollar has in terms of, you know, trading that FX. You know, it really is, you know, it really is the big daddy of, uh, of the FX markets. OK, um, more of which we'll touch on in, in, a, in a moment. So. Uh, not unsurprisingly, you know, as you can see there, the, the dollar is king in the FX market, right? And more than 50% of trades in the FX market involve the US dollar. So, you know, with that in mind, it makes sense for us to, as a starting trader, okay, in trading FX, is, is to focus on the majors, okay, to focus on those US dollar pairs, all right? Remember, an FX trader is, you know, is, is two trades effectively, you know, you've got the base currency and a quote currency, and you are basically trading the one against the other. But as it says, more than 50% of this, uh, all trades involve the US dollar. So it makes sense for us to focus on the majors, all right, which we'll look at. And then also to have a look at the, the miners, which is those, so let's say those two to eight currencies trading amongst each other. And then there are the others known as the exotics, right, which might be you know, Brazilian, Real, Mexican, Peso, Hungary, Hungarian, is it Florin? Okay, um, so, you know, but what's important to understand is that unlike the stock market, the FX market has neither a physical location nor a central exchange. So if you're trading in the UK, if you want to buy UK stocks, you're going through to the, you know, the, the London Stock Exchange. OK, that's not just, that's not the case with FX markets. OK, it's known as OTC over the counter. It runs 24-5 and it is effectively it's effectively the biggest market in the world that most um, uh, traders and certainly most private retail traders will be engaged with. All right. Um, uh, and as I said, it, it's it runs 24-5. So for ourselves here, let's say in Europe. You know, when the markets open in the uh, Pacific, so when they start to open in, you know, Auckland, in Sydney, okay, Singapore, Tokyo, you know, that is normally Sunday night, our time, certainly here in the uh, in the UK and Western Europe. Uh, and then that will run until the US market closes on Friday night. So that's about, you know, that normally is around about 9 p.m. Uh, Western Europe time. So for when the, uh, the, the US market shuts down, you know, it's all pretty much uh, done four o'clock to four, four thirty on Friday uh, afternoon US time, you know, and so it runs constantly through that time, which allows people wherever they are in the world, okay, whether you are in the European session or the Asian session or the New York session to be able to access and trade the FX market. Okay. And this is what makes it another reason why it makes it so very popular for, uh, for private traders. So, um, you know, as you know, this, this is just reinforcing that, you know, what we've already learned so far, namely that, as you can see, in terms of, you know, world FX reserves, you know, what countries have, 62% of what, you know, countries' uh, FX reserves are made up of the, uh, the US dollar, okay? And there you go. That's, that's just all it's doing is reinforcing the fact that, you know, all of these countries need to sort of uh, have uh, dollars on hand to be able to complete their international trades, commodities trades, and it just basically focuses all that attention on the, uh, on the US dollar. And thanks, Joe Cal. So he says that my uh, connection is a bit on I'm just checking here. It should be, uh, I'm hoping it should be okay and stuff. So just, um, but uh, thank you for making that, uh, making me aware of that and stuff. I'm, I'm just checking that uh, the connection is okay. But uh, thanks for bringing that to my attention.
so um, if we look at if we're going to take a focus as a starting point in the FX markets, um, the kind of the starting point is a thing called the US dollar index. Okay, the 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 what you'll quite often hear is known as the Dixie. All right, very often it'll be it'll be either as a uh, uh, you know it'll either be termed as like a DXY or DXI depending upon. Um, uh, the uh, particular sort of you know exchange or trade where you're trading, but in view university we call the Dixie, and it's a is a measure of the value of the U.S. dollar versus a basket of currencies. So it's you know mostly against the euro. Okay, I think it's about fifty seven percent weighted across against the euro, but then also the Swiss franc, the Japanese yen, Canadian dollar, British pound, and Swedish krona. Okay, and uh, the value of that index is a fair indication of the value of the U.S. dollar in global markets. Um, it's it's not perfect by any means, but then uh, nothing ever is in in trading. Okay, nothing ever is, but it is a good tool to be able to give you a, a little bit of a fair indication of the value of uh, the U.S. dollar in global markets. And as I said, if we're gonna if we are gonna trade FX markets, regardless whether you trade price action or whatever uh, other style, um, understanding the U.S. dollar and where it is is you know is 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 key. Really, it's absolutely critical and key. So um, you'll find that there is a you know you can. Um, that find and utilize that there's you know, a, a US dollar chart, okay, dollar index DXY. You'll find that you know across on the Admus platform, but across all sorts of uh, uh, the internet as well. And that's a weekly chart, okay. And what we're seeing here is what's really good to know is really rather than the, uh, the number one zero hundred, okay. That's um, that's kind of a let's say a version of a data point that more to it than that but um you know what we're looking at is you know when when the dollar is well above 100 you know we're seeing immense us dollar strength okay in the world and that 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 can help us with our uh, trading tactics and when the number is much lower you know as we've seen a few years ago it was down to like 90 89 it's an indication of dollar weakness all right uh, and all of that has implications you know it has implications on things like emerging markets because an awful lot of their debt is uh, is denominated in dollars so if you know the dollar is strong that means their debts are you know going to be uh, 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 you know, uh, more expensive, which has a, an impact, or alternatively, even you know, if, when the uh, the dollar is weak, okay, that has an impact on commodity prices, or you know, when the dollar is whether weak or strong. So, you know, it, as I said, keeping an eye on top of the the dollar and just understanding, okay, whether you know whether it's in a strong trend, okay, whether it is, you know, whether it is, you know, whether it's angry in terms of it's but very volatile, or whether it's invariably it's asleep, okay. And all these things are you know, being perhaps a little bit simplistic, but all of those things that all they pay towards actually basically just giving you a good starting point when it comes to understanding FX markets and how we want to uh, how we want to look to trade them. So you know that's all great as a bit of an insight, but we, now we want to start to look at well actually how do we how do we use this information? How do we how do we turn that into uh, into trading information? So you know why is it important to us as traders? Well. Um, Actively traded pairs, okay, FX pairs, they have higher liquidity and, uh, you know, more interest usually means it's easier to buy and sell in FX. Now, of course, you know, trading as, as private retail traders, um, you know, it's normally already like easy to buy and sell, but, but as you grow in size, well, then invariably, you know, you have to recognize elements in terms of liquidity, you know, liquidity really being, you know, how easy is it for you to, to get in and out of the market without, you know, without any particular uh, major amount of volatility. Not something that, uh, something that most retail traders have to worry about, but it is something as you become a more advanced trader to recognize where, you know, recognize areas where major institutions might want to do their business. That, that becomes um, very useful to understand. Um, it also means that you know high liquidity equates with lower commission costs, uh, and that generally generates good trading conditions. So you have things like lower spreads. Okay, the difference between the the, the you know the the bid and the ask, the between the buy and the sell price, the minimum commissions for rolling over positions. If you hold positions for a long time, okay, you engage with swaps. Um, there is no or a very small commission for opening a trade, and you tend to get good fast trading execution. So. When you're starting as a trader, those may not necessarily seem, you know, the the most relevant or important uh, pieces. But as I said, as you as you trade for longer, as you trade, as you gain in experience, as your position size increases, you know, those are things that 
do become important to Cape because they are a cost of business. And, and, you know, we are here to generate and build our own trading businesses. That's what we're particularly looking at. So they become useful and they become, you know, relevant to us. And it's another reason why actually focusing on U.S. dollar pairs as a beginning place is normally a really good start for, um, for most traders. But we will look at that on the live markets in a moment. What it also means is that, you know, if you're trading, look, focusing on those US dollar pairs is that, you know, you also get things like, you know, more analysis and expert opinions. There's plenty of, you know, plenty of uh, education and insight on how to trade the kind of the, you know, the, the the majors and things like, you know, the euro dollar in particular, and, you know, to a lesser extent, the miners, but you get more an analysis and expert opinions. I would admit that can be both a blessing and a curse. All right, when you're when you're new, okay, you know it might appear that it's a bit challenging because you can find, you know, for every opinion that tells you to be a buyer of the dollar, there'll be someone telling you to be a seller. All right, but with a bit of experience and also just doing your own price action analysis, you start to sort of build up a, a you know a picture of 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 where the strength and weaknesses within the FX markets. Uh, and also, there's you know, there's more forecasts and trading signals created and published for more popular pairs. Um, personally, you know, I don't I don't actually really suggest people start following trading signals. Um, you know, I, I can understand why people might like that or might be interested in it, but generally, I think you know the people who I've worked with who have been most successful as traders, you know, they've done the work for themselves. They do their own analysis. They create their own trade plans. They follow through on their trade plans. They review their trades. Okay, they put out the sloppy trades and improve and tweak the, the trades that work for them. And that's actually how they become successful. You'll also see that, you know, dollar pairs, they'll have more focused coverage of events in the news and the media relating to those pairs. And not unsurprisingly, that means there's also more trading guides and education focused on those pairs. And even if you just look at the Admiral's website, okay, and go on to the uh, education tab there, you'll find there is a, a huge amount of, you know, fabulous content there, you know, both uh, written, but also across the social media platforms that focus on, you know, trading elements, okay, and education based on the US dollar, the sort of kind of, let's say, the majors, the minors, and, and the FX market. So, which can help you when you're uh, when you know you're finding your footing in trading FX markets. Something a little bit, uh, but also what we're interested in is things like timings and geography. Okay, and you know what can impact popular currencies is also the time they are relating uh, trading related to their geography. So we still find within FX markets that that London is still the hub. Okay, for FX markets, and so the European session which is between about 0700 to 1600 you know london time it is still the main trading fx session followed by the uh, the new york the us session which is our afternoon but of course is the the us uh, um, uh, us early morning uh, and what you very often find is that there can be quite a uh, interesting uh, and volatile in both good and bad ways time for trading that between around about 3 to 4 p.m london time uh, and why is that as well because we have an overlap of the european and the u.s session so we have basically european sessions coming to an end whereas the u.s session is starting to get into uh, full flow we also get things like the uh, the london fix the fx fix which you know has uh, has occurred occurs around about that time as well that's probably a, a, so that in itself as a subject for a, for another day and um, but understanding this kind of the these timing is overlap it is useful for new traders who are starting to to look to engage with fx markets so and um, what we see yeah you know we have forex market sessions we have london time but as i said what we can say is you know london 7 p.m uh, 7 a.m and i do appreciate that uh, we have people joining us from all over um in the world so you just need to you know adjust it to your own um relevant time zone but you know the the kind of main session really is is still a lot of that london session okay the london early morning sessions are great session to trade fx uh, and then in the uh, london western european uh, afternoon is when the new york session the american start runs on until you know late into the uh into the evening here uh here in western europe before we then switch over to kind of the asian session the sydney and tokyo sessions and so as they finish up okay as they finish up overnight well we start to get the european session kicking in and so as i said it's a it's a 24 hour market for five days okay that's that's what works and that can be really that can be very useful um you know uh, uh, for trades because i appreciate 
we have traders who join us from all over the the, the world okay uh, and it's about finding which which particular session is most suitable for you you know and lots of people like to trade that early morning london session and if it's at two o'clock or three o'clock in the morning for you okay wherever you are joining us from the world well the reality is that that is unlikely to be sustainable, all right? You know, it's not necessarily healthy you being up at two in the morning trying to trying to trade, okay, and doing without sleep because I assure you um, sleep is a, is a hugely important performance element for, for trading well and stuff. So it's about finding, you know, which session suits you best based upon your own, you know, your lifestyle, commitments, responsibilities, your geography, and along with that, well, then which are the best FX pairs to trade during that particular session? So when it comes to sort of moving across to trading effects, well, you know, as we're about to switch across, you know, this is what I would suggest new traders do. You set up a profile on your MT4 or MT5 platform, set one up just specifically focused on the US dollar to begin with, just focus on the US dollar. And then as you grow in experience, you can set up profiles for the other FX pairs and you'll see. When you switch across, I mean, I have a profile for sterling and a profile for all the other major um, major minor currencies So, in order to be able to give me a snapshot. But as a new trader, if you start setting up a US dollar profile, and we'll look at that in a moment. And then on each of those charts, OK, just make sure you're drawing in those levels of support resistance. All right. Just, you know, monthly, weekly and the daily. All right. And you can update on a daily. And then what is useful and interesting to know is study for are there any correlated trends within the US dollars, all right, and the US dollar major pairs? Are they showing, you know, dollar weakness? Are they showing dollar strength? Because that can be enormously helpful in terms of understanding what we're looking to, to trade. Where possible, we want to trade in the direction of, you know, ideally a strong US dollar trend, okay? Equally, it could be a weak dollar trend, right? It might be a weak dollar trend. But when we see a strong dollar trend, you will see, because it's the king of the FX market, when that dollar is strong, okay, we will see it basically sort of driving all of the other FX action, okay? And we start to see those correlations that can be very useful and helpful for us. As I said, we might be trading breakouts or pullbacks, preferably. I, I personally prefer to trade pullbacks, but I do recognize some people here look to trade uh, breakouts, and we'll, you know, we'll look at that in a moment. Uh, and as always, you know, we're talking about you know, utilizing price action of candlesticks for our triggers, but always ensure you, you manage risk. Okay, And we did a couple of sessions on managing risk using price action. Uh, you know, why is it relevant? You can find that on the uh, on the YouTube channel. But if we just even if you just start this off as your as your little bit of a, a daily plan, we'll start to be able to build that. And I'll show you now, you know, um, how that looks. So, you know, final points in terms of using this to trade before we switch across the charts, you know, we should just focus on trading the majors to, to begin with for new traders, because as we've discussed, lots of liquidity. Usually enough volatility for your for your trade, okay, to give you a trade opportunity, tighter spread, which becomes a cost of business, and there's plenty of research out there for you to work with. And effectively, that would make you a US dollar trader. And that's okay. All right, that's absolutely okay as a starting point for trading FX markets and utilizing price action. It means it's easier to follow the formal news because the US, those major economic elements of uh, the calendar, all right, they're always, you know, well um uh well promulgated in advance and there's always plenty of coverage around them plenty of research and it makes it easier to avoid overwhelm all right and there are you know 50 60 70 tradable currencies out there but actually you might just be starting with a small basket to begin with to to give you the opportunity and we're going to look at that now so just before we switch across to the charts just recognize that you know um fx markets have become a very popular asset uh, class over the uh, last 20 years for private retail traders you have to remember that you know you are actually you're trading money there is nothing physical when we're trading fx you have to think of it like buying or selling a share in a in a country and to begin with it's best to focus on the the majors and these are the major currency trading against the us dollar uh, and the us dollar is the main driver of uh, foreign exchange trades so why don't we have a little look at them on uh, the live markets and see how we can set this up to work with it uh, before that just uh, um, remember you can uh, join us for the next session it's actually should be wednesday 10th of may next wednesday really next session where we're going to look at how to incorporate supply and demand into price action trading include what is supply and demand how does it work with price action? What tactics work with it best? So that's two o'clock London time, next Wednesday, 10th of May. Check your inbox for the webinar link or head over to the website and sign up.
As always, you can get in touch with us there. You can see the email address there, okay, if you want to, to get in contact with ourselves. But um, let's just switch across to the charts and let's have a little look and uh, see what, you know, how we've set this up for trading price action on the FX market. So just bear with me a moment and, and we'll switch you across. Excellent. So I'm hoping you can still hear me and hoping you can still see me. And uh, just going to put that down here for the moment. Um, so what I have here is, you can see that, that this is a US dollar profile, all right? It's a profile on uh, on my MetaTrader platform. What I've got here is I've got the Aussie against the US dollar, Euro against the US dollar, Pound against the US dollar, the dollar Swiss franc, the Kiwi against the dollar, the dollar against the Canadian, the dollar against the yen, and then also the dollar index. Okay, in on uh, the Admiral's platform, you'll see it as USDX, uh, and then it's a effectively it's a future contract on a CFD. And let's just uh, show you where that is on the market watch. Okay, so you have that. Uh, you know the market watch here over on the side, and actually what you can do is well, furthermore, bang, you can see that you know at the start you've all pretty much got well, most of the majors there, haven't you? Euro, dollar, pound. Uh, pound dollar, dollar yen, dollar Swiss franc, Aussie dollar, dollar CAD, okay? Some of the major ones, then you can go down and find the uh, uh, others like US dollar, US, uh, Kiwi dollar against US dollar. Um, but also what you will also find is, you know, there are a few of the exotic dollar pairs. So that's US dollar against the Hong Kong dollar, US dollar against the yeah, Hungarian forint, um, US dollar against the Norwegian krona and dollar against the Swedish krona. And then also you have USDX M3, okay? That's the thing. Uh, and that's what you know we've got there. Um, now, as I said, what I am looking at is effectively a, a case of um, being able to utilize this to give me an insight into whether we have you know any real particular strength or weakness in the dollar. I, I can see from the dollar index, okay, that you know we have for the last couple of months we have mostly been in on the daily chart on a a downtrend there, okay. With as price action has been working its way down. Remember what I was saying, you know, a good trend should leap off the chart at you. You know what we can see there is just a case of us just um, finishing there and just basically making lower lows and lower highs, okay, as we uh, uh, as we as we work our way down. So that gives me an indication that invariably that you know we have a um, you know that uh, that has been a weaker dollar. It might be changing here. It might be changing here. There's perhaps a little inverse head and shoulders, looking maybe to to build. But for the most part, that is still that is still for the most part in a dollar dollar downtrend. Okay. And so, with that in mind, when I look at the uh, the other charts, okay, I want to start to see well how is that how is that reflecting? You know, uh, in terms of the U.S. dollar against the other FX pairs. And so, if I just quickly go to the daily chart here. What we've seen here is, you know, this is the dollar against the Swiss franc, okay? And so we looked at that dollar index. It has been shown that for the last couple of months, it's been in a downtrend. Well, what do you know? The dollar against the Swiss franc has also been in a downtrend. So that's just showing that, you know, the, the dollar is weak, certainly against the, uh, the Swiss franc. But on the flip side, we also have the euro against the US dollar. So we can see there the last couple of months, the euro has been rising against the uh, um, the US dollar there. Okay, that's just just reinforcing that case of, you know, there is dollar weakness the last couple of months, right? We've seen the euro has been strong against the dollar. The Swiss franc has been strong against the dollar. These are all the things that kind of start to help us build a picture of, you know, uh, that strength and weakness. The pound against the US dollar. This is the daily chart here. We can see that, you know, the pound, you know, has been making higher highs, higher lows, okay, and just edging its way up, okay? All of that reinforcing an element of dollar weakness against the thing. Carla says, is there also a, a euro index uh, strength? Um, yeah, there is actually. The, you, know, you will find that these days there are um, mostly there are indexes for many, but all of those kind of, let's say, you know, what I would call those kind of, those mostly major currencies. Um, you know, so you can get a euro index, sterling index, Swiss franc, Japanese yen index, okay? Um, they, they are out there, okay, and they can be useful. And they are not on Admiral's platforms, but you will, you'll be able to find them on the internet. Um, you know, and that can be very helpful. But um, one of the things I do, Carlos, is, you know, is, is one of the reasons I have, um, you know, I have this as a dollar profile. But, you know, I have one for the euro 
and so I can have the, it's the same charts, but it's the euro against all of those kind of other uh, major currencies. And there, once again, I can utilize that to give myself a quick indication of where's the strength, where's the weakness. Is the euro strong against these, or is it like in the dollar? Is it weak against them? Okay, and that's that's probably more advanced FX. Uh, um, uh, strategy and trading tactics which i utilize myself looking for strength and weakness and um, but yes you will find them out there but as a starting point if you're even just doing this on the us dollar that is a that's a great place for you to that's a great place for you to work uh, to to start okay and then uh then build up there so mark says when can we be sure to say there's a reversal in us dollar index downtrend i mean is the daily time frame the main indicator should ensure on the four hour a uh, good question mark um you know what i'd say is you know um let's just bring this up here is that you know this has been quite clearly in a downtrend okay and you know i'll be looking at here we have here this fractal here is showing us you know this is the the first fractal where we've invariably we've had basically the high has been you know it's been a it's been a higher low all right and that's what we first see. so if we've got a high low well next what we want to see is that we get a high high and this is the this is the these are the last two fractals here okay price has been in those swings moves and what i'd need to see is we've seen price try to trade through it okay so what i'd be wanting to see is that basically once we move up and, and start really closing um significantly above the 20 period moving average and above these kind of recent highs okay that is what would give me confirmation that basically we have gone through a uh a, through a reversal on that and you know the daily chart is absolutely uh it was absolutely fine to sort of to to work um to work through that okay but that's a good question i'll be you know we're at that point at the moment just making decision is it is it looking to uh is it looking to start reversing and, and we have this afternoon we have later on today we have the us fomc their interest rate uh, announcement okay uh, and then we also have the nfp numbers on friday both of those things will i think will have a drive on whether we get confirmation that there is a reversal in dollar fortunes uh, or or whether we we continue down so we're at we're at an inflection point okay at the moment where we're likely to lead to uh, we're likely to 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 see that happen so uh, in terms of let's have a little look at the dollar against the strength because what we want to be doing is looking at you know um I remember we were saying you know ideally what we want to be doing is to look into trade simple trends and and that is what we have seen there okay with the dollar against the swiss franc we've had you know the dollar weakness swiss franc strength and we've just basically been working our way down at price beneath the 20 moving average beneath the 50s beneath the 200 and as a very simple trading tactic okay that's just as a very simple trading tactic what you can do is on the four hour charts for you know for swing trading okay just um uh you know just to have a look at this is that um, what i have on the four hour chart is i have this which is a 300 period moving average okay 300 period simple moving average what what is that why is that i'm um, on a four hour chart so that's giving me an indication of where the 50 period moving average is on the daily chart so we back up to the daily you can see how i've got the red quite bold that 50 period moving average is a solid indication of let's say fair value okay so when price is beneath it on the daily chart um, i want to have a, a short bias i want to be looking to the short side when it's above it okay when like when here it's above it i want to just have a bias to be a buyer okay just simple just utilizing simple moving average okay and then price action to trade with it so on my four hour charts you can see i've got that dotted red 300 um period moving average so when price is beneath that then i'm looking to be a short trader and as i said i like to trade on on pullbacks so here we go i'm going to show you here is is that you know once uh one price is beneath and the price is beneath the 20 and beneath the 50 and beneath the 300 well then every time price comes back to the 50 period moving average and rejects it well then that is for me a signal on where to go short okay so during most of uh march and april hopefully you can see that there is that you know we were in a downtrend okay i knew we were in a downtrend because price was beneath the daily 50 that's a simple enough bias and also you know as price the 20 was beneath the 50 period moving average on the four hour uh, and then as i said every time price came back to the 50 let's clear that off again okay every time price came back to there it rejected it see how the price action rejected it we had you know lots of pin bars okay lots of pin bars at that 50 period moving average okay prices pull back goes down pulls back goes down pulls back goes down pulls back goes down okay that's 
that is a very, very simple way to trade price action in alignment, okay, with the um, the you know the, the the dominant daily trend, okay. That means it's just nice and simple. All it requires is you to be patient enough to wait for to to check that you know the the price is beneath the twenty, which is beneath the fifty, which is beneath the three hundred on the four hour chart. And that means you can just focus on one four hour time frame. If you've been, as I say, if you've been drawing in your levels of you know significant support and resistance, and recognizing your big numbers. That becomes quite a simple way, okay, quite a simple way to trade with the trends in the FX market, all right? doesn't require you to be there all day, every day. You can just identify you know, when those four-hour candles are likely to work to complete. Uh, and as I said, if, even if you're just starting with the FX markets, well, let's just clear, these, clear this all down a bit. You know what we're looking at is you no. Know, you're effectively looking at you know seven real currencies. Uh, you can trade the dollar index, but I, I generally don't. Okay, what you're looking for is in those other seven majors. While well, you're just looking for that kind of that that sort of particular sort of you know trade idea, trade setup. Okay, we know as I said, euro dollar has been there. Okay, uh, and what you're looking for is you know once it's let me just show it in here. Bang. You know once we're you know above the the, the on the four hour chart once we're above the three hundred period moving average. Every time that okay price is above the, the the twenty, the fifty, and the three hundred. Every time it comes back, there's a bounce. Okay, every time there it came too low, so that was not that's not for us. Okay, but there we had a, a rejection there. Okay, before it went up, uh, and that's what you're looking to do. Okay, and it starts to get a little bit messy. There is there, there, but it starts to get a little bit messy, and that's just telling you that there's you know there's a possible end of a trend coming, which is what we recognised when we looked at the dollar index chart and we're looking at. So that becomes just. A very, very simple way to trade price action on an FX market in line with the with the the dominant trend. Okay. And that's what we want to be doing as new traders. You don't need to, you don't need to be trying to be a you know a smart, you know, uh, you know, a, a silly, you know, a smart boy. Okay. All right. You just need to be able to find out where is the best trends. All right, where is the strength and the weakness in terms of which has got the best trends. And then just flow with that. Okay, don't fight it. Just try to trade align with it. That is a far better way for you to uh, to sort of to try and uh, operate. Mark's asking why you've got a, a ten period uh, um, uh, ATR. Okay, instead of default fourteen. Um, no major thing. It's just that uh, if I'm looking at that on the kind of daily chart, it's the last couple of weeks. Okay, just gives me the last couple of weeks of the uh, average range. Okay, um, uh, and the only reason I'm looking for that is as if I get a signal that if I get a, a candle signal which is just much much bigger, which is much much bigger than the uh, what the average range is at that particular time, or that that will have an impact on whether I take that trade. Or whether I look to um, whether I look to avoid it, or whether I utilize a, a more advanced type of uh, entry um, with that. Okay, so that's 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 really what I'm looking for, just to make sure that because ideally I want to to work on the um, uh, the sort of you know smaller smaller trigger candles. Okay, because it gives me my chance to achieve my reward to risk better. Dinesh says, will this work for the five minute chart? Um, it, the principle would work. Okay, the principle would work, namely that you know just. You know, just wanting to trade in line, okay, with a higher time frame, uh, higher time frame uh, 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 trend. That would that would work absolutely fine as a theory. Uh, it's it's not something I can can really comment on specifically. Okay, it's not something I have done myself. I tend to be a reversal trader for my shorter term time frames. Okay, but in theory, the concept is sound. Is namely identifying the trend on a higher time frame, and then executing in line with that on a smaller time frame. Here's what we're just utilizing: just the daily, and the four hourly, because I want traders to be able to sort of, you know, not have to sit in front of the charts all day. Be able to make a little trading plan around when those four hour candles are completing, and just you know, being identifying, focused on trading the ones that give you an opportunity to join the existing dominant um, trend. So hope that uh, hope that helps. Uh, with that good question, good question, Dinesh. So, so um, there you go, Lodge. Unfortunately, as always, I've run over a little bit. Um, I will try to fit in as much as I possibly can. So I, I do apologise that sometimes maybe I go a little bit fast because as I'm just trying to get as much as I possibly can across to you. You know, that's why these sessions are recorded, so you can watch them back in your own slow time, watch them back a couple of times and, and get, gain as much as you possibly can from these uh, sessions.
Um, I hope you've found that uh, useful. I hope that's given you a bit of insight into A, what is the FX market, and B, you know, how you could just start to get engaged with FX markets just using price action, just a simple, simple set up a profile for the US dollar. Okay, set of simple plans, just looking to identify where the you know the dominant trend is and trade with that. Okay, with a if they, you know if there's a dominant US dollar trend that you could work with. Okay, we want to you know you know you want think of the think of the trend as like the ocean. Okay, you like being a surfer on the ocean. You you want the ocean to do the heavy lifting when you're a surfer. And when you're a trend trader, you want the dominant trend to do the heavy lifting for you with that. So don't fight it. Look to, to work, uh, look to work with it. So um, as always, I hope you found that useful. And I, I wish you the very best of success in your own trading, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, remember, next week, okay, Wednesday, 10th of May, 2 o'clock London time, we'll be talking about price action with uh, supply and demand, how they can combine together. So be sure to join us for that. Uh, and, you know, you'll probably, as I said, receive a feedback form after this. By all means, we really appreciate any thoughts or feedback you can give us. Or if there's topics you'd like to see me cover in future sessions, put them in there and I'll be happy to sort of take that on board and build that in to future. So trade well, everybody, and I'll speak to you soon. Cheers.